New Jersey. Seven minutes past eight, Liberate, that's the Channel Islands-based equality group, has contacted religious and spiritual groups in Guernsey to discuss same-sex marriage. The group hopes to arrange meetings there next month to hear their views on any planned law change and explain what their members want. Now, you'll recall that Jersey's Chief Minister, Senator Ian Gorse, met members of Liberate in July as part of his assessment of how any changes here would affect islanders. Now, they also want to speak to church leaders. But the very Reverend Bob Key has issued a statement saying that he'd be pleased to discuss equal marriage with them. And on this programme, the head of the Methodist Church in Jersey, the Reverend Graham Halls, has said it's an important debate that needs to be had. Well, Martin Gavet from Liberate says they hope to reach an understanding with church groups across the Channel Islands. Let's now welcome Pippa McCarthy from Guernsey this morning, who speaks on behalf of Liberate. Pippa, do you think you'll find some common ground with church members in either island? Um, I hope we will. I mean, we as Liberate at Guernsey were, were set up in February. The Jersey branch is in the process of being set up at the moment. Um, I'm sure we can find common ground because uh, it's not a confrontation we want, it's a discussion. Um, and some of the church, I mean, we're, we're meeting not just with churches, with all faith groups, that Buddhist, um, the Islamic society over here, um, that is what we, we wish for. And uh, a lot of um, faith groups are very open to the LBGTQ community parts of the Ang Anglican Church are. It's just that the evangelical end of the Anglican Church is that bit more vocal, I'm afraid. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, haven't you? It's very difficult when you talk about church groups to consider them to be one, because there's such a wide diversity of views within many faith groups. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all um, religions, all faith groups have changed um, through, through, through the centuries. I mean, so have all holy books been written and interpreted in different ways over the centuries. So to stick to the doctrines based around the mores of the distant past, uh, um, you know, is, is not the way to go forward, and this is what we're hoping to, to discuss, as I, well as a whole range of other subjects. Are you encouraged that no doors have been metaphorically slammed in your face at this stage? So far, I don't think they have. Um, the response, you know, we've had um, good response or no response, and, um, um, you know, we're, we're still waiting. Some people may be still thinking about it and discussing it with the members of their temple, church, chapel, whatever. Um, but, you know, what, what we want to do is to set up a dialogue. We would like to stress that, that as far as we are aware, the majority of faith groups stress that human beings should love each other. And that, to us, includes everyone. So um, we just want to get this dialogue going and perhaps contribute in some way to changing the minds of those who are, who are prejudiced and to informing and educating those who just don't know about LGBTQ lives. And what about those people who adhere to their faith without prejudice? They say, my faith says it's not appropriate to have equal marriage. Well, as I said just now, all holy books are reinterpreted. And, you know, um, in this day and age, if your son disobeyed you, you wouldn't take him out to the edge of St. Helier and stone him. Um, you know, if you decided that that not nasty woman in the supermarket was a witch, you wouldn't ask for her to be burned. There, there's been change over the centuries, and there can still be change. We want to talk about those changes, and if they can't, they find it in their heart to um, progress beyond the dictates of certain parts of, of, say, for instance, the Bible, then we just have to agree to differ and you know, be kind to each other. I think that is significant. There are a great many uh, people in this island who are of the Roman Catholic tradition who have absolutely not a bone of prejudice within them, and yet they will find it very difficult to, you know, go to church and see same-sex couples get married. Yes, but I mean, that, it's not just about um, same-sex couples getting married. It's about the whole life of people within our community. You know, I'm, I'm straight. Uh, I have a gay son. But um, it, it, that is the thing we're campaigning for strongly at the moment. But it's the whole understanding of everything, really, that we're, we're aiming for. I know it may be 
relatively simple theology, but aren't we all made in God's image? Um, according to the Bible, we are. I'm not entirely sure what the Quran and uh, the, the Hindu and Buddhist scriptures say about that. When we look at the United Reformed Church here in Jersey and indeed members of our Quaker community, you're pushing at open doors. Uh, so do you think it's, you know, softly, softly, gently, gently, you might get there in the end? It's the only way to work, isn't it? I mean, you know, to crash in and say you've got to change your mind, is no, uh, there's no point in doing that to, say, the Roman Catholics, any more than for them to crash in and say we're ungodly and get out is any good for them. I mean... Um, the Roman Catholic Church has changed a lot over the centuries, as has every other. So we just hope that, you know, we can come to some kind of um, uh, common ground. Um, you know, I have three gay Roman Catholic friends, and um, they are churchgoers. They work and live within their churches. We've got to consider them as well as anybody who has no religion. Pippa, lovely to talk with you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Pippa McCarthy there from Liberate in Guernsey. We'll talk more about this issue, no doubt, over the coming weeks and months here on BBC Radio Jazz.